how much money does your life cost? And not in a weird sadistic way, but really, how much money do you need to live comfortably? When you're able to answer that question, you'll unlock the answer behind how to actually save your money properly. And I'm gonna show you how to do just that. The first thing I want you to focus on is this. Life is not made up of monthly expenses. It's made up of time, memories, life experiences, people who love you, people who you love. So when answering the question, how much money do you need to live comfortably? You have to think outside of just your monthly expenses because things are gonna come into your life a lot of times that are way outside of your monthly expenses that you're typically not prepared for. And I made a little list, I'm gonna put it on the screen for you. You can screenshot it if you want, but things like holidays, gifts, birthdays, weddings, charity, family emergency, medical expenses, travel, a flat tire, goals and dreams, and car maintenance. Now I've seen a bunch of things on several different people's budgets as I've sat down throughout the years with people in my coaching calls. And as I've just lived life as a human being, I've seen a lot of things on people's budgets. That little list that I just created off the top of my head, that right there is missing from like 90% of people's budgets. Yet a bunch of these pop up every single year for a lot of people and a lot of times you're not prepared for it. So here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna pull up my smart money calculator that I designed just for you and I'm gonna show you how it works and I'm gonna apply this to a real life example. The only thing I want you to do is keep your monthly expenses in mind and then you add all of these extra expenses on top of them because people tend to live far outside of their monthly budgets despite how much money they make, despite how much debt they're in. Here is a quick and easy solution this is a year at a glance. I'm gonna go ahead and record my screen for you. So what we're looking at here is my fancy smart money calculator. It's super simple, but it's very, very effective. And here's a, a spoiler alert about this. You don't have to wait till the beginning of the year to do this. You can start this literally right now. Check this out. At the top, I just put the amount of money for this fictional character that we're reviewing right now. I put the amount of money that I think that they're making after taxes, which is a flat $6,000 per month. I did this purely because it makes the math a lot easier. And of course, the calculator adds it up to $72,000 per year. Cool, so what I've saved the time for this video in doing is I just filled this middle section right here with expenses. So that way it automatically calculates how much it's gonna cost the person per year. And if y'all want this template, y'all can download it in the description. It's simply called the Smart Money Calculator. So for this particular example, the top six items right here that I have highlighted, these are gonna be just the regular monthly expenses that, you know, they just happen normally, you pretty much expect those. When a lot of people base their budgets, they base it purely off of just, you know, the standard things that they need, which is a bare bones, realistic scenario, but to get a little more realistic with it, you have to account for when you go outside of that and when emotions are involved, when you love someone, or when you just have an impulse one day, sometimes you just really wanna spend money on other things. So you have to account for those two on top of necessities right here. And as you can see, these are the more consistent expenses. I call them constant expense because they don't typically change. But then on this side right here, the orange uh, side, you see groceries, entertainment, restaurants, gas. These are the things that you're typically gonna see in somebody's budget, but everything below it, that's where it kind of gets like 50-50. You might see car maintenance in somebody's budget, but then again, you might not. You might just see gasoline and fuel. So anyway, here's where the smart money calculator comes in. All, everything off to the right side that's calculating things for you, this right here is letting you know your constant expenses plus your other expenses, that's gonna be the total cost per year of all of this right here that my, my cursor is around. And then that gives you the grand total of how much money per year that I have in the highlighted box right now, the total amount of money per year that you have completely left over, that's $6,072, which means per month you are allowed to spend 506 extra dollars and that's beyond everything that we've already planned for. If you wanna save your money correctly, you have to look at it from a year at a glance view, and then you have to divide everything down to how much money you're gonna have left over every single month, even after your monthly expenses, and even after the things outside of your monthly expenses. It's taken me a while to develop this, but 
I think this right here is the perfect system for anyone who is trying to save more money. You can easily double or triple your money like this. We're gonna jump into some numbers right now so we can make this more real life for you. So, you know, let's say your rent is $1,300, your utilities is $60, your phone bill is $170 if you have, you know, Verizon, that's pretty much what's gonna run you. Car note, $400. Most people do have car notes and I do recognize that. Car insurance, $200. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Again, ease of math. Internet, $80 a month, right? Now we're gonna jump into the outside of the thing. So the thing about stuff outside of your monthly expenses, you don't need these things to survive, but they are very valuable to have. So for example, your Roth IRA, I talk about this so much on this channel about investing and having a 401k and a Roth IRA and an individual brokerage account. Roth IRA is so important, so I'll put it up here. And just looking at it realistically, a lot of people are not gonna be able to max out their Roth IRAs. So right here we have $300 a month and it auto calculates it to $3,600 per year. So you know exactly how much money you're spending per year when you commit to a Roth IRA. So it, it makes your goals and dreams, and I even have something named goals and dreams up here on this list, but it, it makes your goals and dreams more tangible because it's telling you how much money you need to give each month towards that goal in order to reach your yearly goal. So it makes a lot more sense. It's great to do this for like a New Year's resolution or something like that, but it's also great to do this anytime during the year when it comes to budgeting i say it's better to get it right sooner than later so anyway 300 dollars for your roth ra 3600 dollars a year and for charity and donations and this could be stuff like you know tithing at church giving money away to actual charities this could be anything from you know giving money to your church actually donating to a company things like that and i just said 80 dollars a month there and that's 960 dollars per year and that's very reasonable. Once you break money down into more tangible bite-sized pieces, things make a lot more sense and things feel a lot more doable than if you just blindly say, well, I got all these monthly expenses. I have been guilty of this, but a lot of us, we blame the lack of money that we have at the end of the month on, on, on how expensive our monthly expenses are. But when you break it down, a lot of times they're not that expensive we're not breaking things down properly because we're not putting our after-tax pay at the top of the spreadsheet like we have in this smart money calculator, which you can get in the description. We're basing things off of our salary prior to being taxed. So that means we think we have more money than we really do have to play with, and therefore we end up spending money on extra things and letting lifestyle creep literally absorb all of our money and then wonder why we don't have anything left over. That's why. Anyway. Goals and dreams. I think everybody needs to have something going towards the goals and their dreams. And your goals and dreams are going to be specific to you. If it's your goal and dream to go to Greece one day and you know spend a month there, you need to start adding money towards that goal. If your goals and dreams are to build a side business or turn a side hustle into a business, that needs to go towards your goal. I can't tell you what it is, only you can, but for this specific example, I figured this person needs to give themselves at least $150 a month. That's $1,800 a year going towards that goal. So it's more of a, a slow burn, more of a slow build up into your personal you know, goals and dreams, but it doesn't make you go broke. You're not spending $2,000 right now on a course. You're, you're, you're spending $80 a month to build up a savings for your goals and your dreams. So when something does pop up or an opportunity does come up, you're like, okay, I'll go to that conference, I'll go to that convention, I'll invest my money here, there. You have more tangibility with this. We're gonna move over to our other expenses. And of course, I purposely left out saving because we have $506 left. You know, to me, when looking at both of these, fun and games are already budgeted in. So I would say, obviously, the 506 needs to go into savings. Just, just my opinion, you do what you want. Anyway, going into other inconsistent expenses. If you're like me and you enjoy eating food, most humans on earth will probably fit into that category. You're gonna spend quite a bit on groceries. Groceries are expensive, especially if you're one of those types like me who likes to get a bunch of organics. I feel you. Anyway, I just said, worst case scenario, we're gonna budget in $900 a month for groceries. If you end up spending less, guess what? The extra $100 can go towards your savings. $300 a month or $3,600 a year. Restaurant, $600 a month. And when you look at these yearly expenses, I really want you to look at it and be like, ooh, I'm spending that much of my salary per year on this. That's the impact behind the spreadsheet. You're, you're not just looking at the monthly number. You're looking at 
the yearly price. And then you can start to make adjustments. I don't want to spend $7,200 a year on restaurants. That's crazy because restaurants are not a need. And, and that would be 100% true. But at the same time, you could be like, well, that's what keeps me sane. If that's something that makes you sane and you get to indulge every now and then at the restaurants, that's perfectly fine too. You get to choose. Anyway, moving on. Gas, $190 a month. That's not really much of anything. Car maintenance, $40. 480. I came up with the $40 a month rule because so if you're saving up $40 every single month going strictly towards your car maintenance, you'll have an excess of $240 every six months. So even if you do have an oil change and it only costs 60 bucks, but then they want to change out your filters and then they want to, you know, you have a, a light that's out in the back and you have all these other added expenses, you don't have to worry about not having the money for all the other things that you may or may not need for your car. You can still say no to all the extra mess they try to charge you with when you get an oil change, but at the same time, if it gives you more mental clarity, you can in fact say yeah, and then they can be like, it'll be $200, you still got 40 left that can then go into your other savings. You see what I'm saying? You're planning for things that are going to happen anyway, but you're not doing it like literally when your pants are caught down. Like it's crazy. Car maintenance comes up every year. Holidays come up every year. Winter comes up every single year. And every time, oh my gosh, I got to get something for, for my grandkids for Christmas. You know, I, I said grandkids, most of you are, are young watching this, but you get what I'm saying. People have that mentality. And it's okay if it happens one time, but it's happening to people for 20 years on end. And it's like people never learn. So this is built for you to learn. Speaking of Christmas, birthdays, $100. Because in August, I don't know about y'all, but I have a ton of family and friends who have birthdays in August. Same thing for October for some reason. So $100 a month is not unreasonable. You could spend $100 on each person for 12 people at the very worst case scenario and have, you know, have spent that $1,200 a year that you're saving up for birthdays. And since you're saving it every month, you could literally give a birthday present out every month as long as it stays within $100. I'm just giving y'all options. Most of y'all probably aren't going to give away 12 gifts to 12 different people per year, but some of you might. So I'm just giving this more of an, an all-inclusive example. But then you got to look at weddings. How often the weddings come up for you? I've had weddings pop up, um... I would say three or four different times I was only able to attend two because I'm across the country for majority of them. But if you put aside $44 for, for the wedding, like there is nothing wrong with that. It's going to end up being $528 a year. It's an odd number. Well, it's an even number, but it's, it's just a strange number to pick because it's not like the numbers you see here with zeros. But I chose it because you never know what might pop up. You might be somebody's best man. You might be somebody's maid of honor. You never know. And you might have to fund something that you weren't originally prepared for. Obviously, you have to pay for your suit or your dress or whatever the case is. Besides all that, we're going to keep going. Holidays, $80. Family emergency, $200 a month. I think this is very important. When I say family emergency, I'm not just necessarily talking about your immediate family, of course, that's where a majority of the money is going to go to. But even think about family members that, you know, you really look up to, that you really, really, they've had an impact on your life. You really love them. You really want to help them. If they ever get into trouble, you want to be able to have a certain amount of money per year that you can just give to them. So if they call you up, hey, um, something came up, I need $300. And no one ever wants to be in that position. But there's nothing better than being in a position to be like, yes, 100%, I can help you. Here's 400 right here. Don't worry about paying me back. Go handle business. That is a beautiful feeling to have. So when you prepare yourself stuff like this, you're not just thinking about your monthly expenses and you're not just thinking about yourself. You're thinking about other people. And this will make you so much better with money, so much faster than you normally would have. And it's purely because... You're planning for things that you wouldn't normally prepare for, but you're also planning for things that other people wouldn't normally prepare for, which makes you a better steward of that money. We're going to keep going. <clears throat> medical expenses. And these things don't typically happen where you have crazy medical bills every single month for, for most people. So $100 a month, I feel, is pretty reasonable. Travel. Travel $50 a month. And flat tire slash tire replacement, like if you have to replace all four tires, for example, 150 a month, 
that's going to give you $1,800 a year. You're not going to need to replace your tires every single year, but I'll tell you what, when it's time to replace a tire, you're probably going to have $3,600 or more saved up and it won't catch you off guard and you won't have to swipe your credit card in order to afford the tire replacements. And another thing, it's not going to cost this much money, but you'll have it as a buffer just in case you need it. And there's a great feeling behind that. And the beauty behind that is even though you've planned all this stuff and your numbers may vary, it depends, but you still have $506 per month that you can save. And guess what? If you decide to save all 506 of these dollars every single month, you will have $6,072 saved per year. And this is built off of what I call a worst case scenario situation. This is the smart money calculator. You're only basing this off of one stream of income, which is your main stream of income, which in most of our cases is going to be work. So in this case, this person makes $72,000 per year at work once you multiply out their monthly after taxes. And that means, you know, before taxes, they make something like $96,000 per year. I'm doing the math off the top of my head. So if that's slightly off, don't come for me in the comments. I don't got time for that mess. But anyway, this person might have opportunity to work overtime at work. They might have a side hustle where they're generating an extra $200, $300 a month. They're not including that in this budget because the extra money that they make from their extra hustles, that's just gonna be seen as extra where they can either save, invest, or blow it. Like it doesn't matter. But the point is your necessities are all budgeted from this one page right here and that's all I wanted to share with you for the smart money calculator. So once you plug those numbers in, you do my favorite step, which is set and forget. So you have a goal to invest every month, you have a goal to save every month. What you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out how much money you have left at the end of every month by using that smart money calculator. But the thing is, you're going to automate it and set your bank account to send this at the beginning of every single month. And every single time you get paid, boom, money comes out, boom, money comes out. And that way you make sure that you take full control of your finances because you're saving what you have immediately instead of saving what you have left at the end. And that my friend is the smart way to save money and do so properly. But I do have a bonus tip for you since you're still here. I want you to commit your extra money to your goals. I know I said, you know, as a third option, you could technically blow any extra money, but you know, you don't have to because you are, you've already had your funding games budgeted into your smart money calculator. I want you to budget the extra two, $300 a month. If you get it, I want you to budget that towards your goals and your dreams, whether that's saving, whether that's your future, whether that's for your kids, whether that's for your wedding, doesn't matter. Put it towards something that you want in life and you will 100% thank yourself in a few short years. This is how you get ahead. And if you wanna get even further ahead, I made a really good video about financial independence. You can check it out right here.